This tutorial is going to show you how to add the, the simplest features in full control, which are line features uh, defined either by Cartesian or polar coordinate systems. So if I click the cell I want, or the row I want to put a feature in, click Add Feature, and then I'll add first a, a Cartesian one. And with Cartesian, I need to define the XYZ position of the start and the XYZ position of the end of the filament. I'll then choose whether it's printed or travel. So with travel, it just won't extrude anything and it will, it will move fast. The speeds for printing and travel are defined over here in the green settings. So these are the default speeds that will be uh, taken by this feature. And then I need to choose the width and height of the extrusion. This doesn't affect the position of the nozzle at all. It just uh, lets full control, um, gives full control the information it needs to determine how much extrusion uh, to set for that line of G-code. So if I go from a position of 50, 50, 0 in XYZ to 100, 100, 0, and then I print and I have a nominal width of 0.5 and a nominal height of 0.2. Uh, and these are defined on the website in the tutorial section, you can see here. And then these terms for E, F and T I'll discuss uh, later, you have to delete them. So if I generate that G-code, and then paste it into Repetier Host. There's our line feature going from position of 50-50 in X to 100-100. And the value of extrusion was calculated by full control as 7.07. .07. If I change my extrusion width to be 1.0, so one millimeter, that value of E should double. So previously it was seven, and now it's 14. If you forget what these terms are, then I'll just add a feature beneath and then skip it. So it will be ignored by full control and then you can look at which and so well. They're also defined in the um, feature params sheet, uh, which you could copy into a new Excel sheet or something. You can also use relative coordinates. So instead of putting 100, 100, 0, I could type that as R50, R50, R0, and that means it's going to move 50 to the right, 50 in the Y, and 0. So if I show you that for 50 in the X, but R0 in the Y, R0 in the Z, now I should do a 50 millimeter long line in the X direction and in here, which it does. So now I'm going to show you polar lines as well. So for a polar line, you need to define the center point and then the radius and the angle of the start and the end of the line. So if I have a start, a center point of 100, 100, and then a radius of 20, an angle, if you set it as zero, it's going to be in the positive direction, and then you can choose anything up to 360 degrees, which will be uh, increasing in the anti-clockwise direction. This is just normal polar coordinates. So if I do it at an angle of zero, that means it will start immediately 20 millimeters to the right of the center, and at a height of zero. And then I can say, let's do it so it ends 20 millimeters above the center, which would mean I'd put it as a radius of 20, and it would end at an angle of 90 degrees. And then I'll do printing and extrusion with the same as first line, and I'll discuss E and F shortly. So if I generate that G code, you can see it's now uh, full control is automatically added travel to the start of it. This point is 100, 100, so that's the center, and the line has gone from uh, 20 millimeters to the right to 20 millimeters above it. If I did it to only go to 40 millimeter, 45 degrees instead of 90, then it would look like this, and it would end here. So you can also change radius. If I told it to end at a radius of 10 and an angle of zero, what that means is it starts at a radius of 20 and an angle of zero. It ends at a radius of 10 and an angle of zero. So it's just a line going straight towards the middle of the circle along the line, which is an angle 
zero. So the middle of the circle is here. It's going to print our line just coming straight in towards the middle of it. So that's how you do the uh, polar and Cartesian equations, uh, sorry, lines. And then the E and F, these and T. T is for tool, so if you've got a multi-tool printer or multiple print heads, you could write T equals zero, T equals one, and that would make the first line print with T equals with tool zero, and the second line print with tool one. There's a few other things you need to set up for multi-tool printing, so I'll discuss them in another tutorial. The E and F are, are relatively simple, so currently these are both printed at a speed of 1000, as you can see here. It's traveling, <coughs> traveling at a speed of 9000 and then printing at a speed of 1000. So if I want to change the second line to print at 500, I just write F equals 500. And then if I generate the G code. Uh, so that error came because I put this feature in, but I haven't put any values in, so I need to skip that feature. So now we can see that the second line is printed at a speed of 500. Um, and the other thing, it's printed with an E value of 2 at the moment, and that value is automatically detected from the length of the line and the height and width. But I could also write in here, I want my E to be 2.15, and I'd have to separate them by a semicolon and write it in that format, E equals number. So now it will change that to to be 2.15, and it's completely ignoring this width and height, so I could set them to be zero, and it will have no impact anymore because we're overriding the um, extrusion amount for that line. So that's Cartesian and polar lines. If I add the line equation, we can do similar definition. Line equation is in Cartesian coordinates, line equation polar is in polar coordinates, and here we have to write the mathematical formulas for the x, y, and z values. So these I'll be discussing in a, another tutorial. But those are the other two options for defining lines.